a warm welcome to one and all once again thank you for joining us today for uh, the session and i am rashmi from grade hr and today's moderator of the session so as you know today we are going to talk about the implications of the latest uae labor laws i know this is the much talked topic so here we are with this session to elaborate on the same and also we have our guest speakers to talk about and discuss and enlighten us about all of the uh, implications that the new labor laws have on us today in the uae so but before that just a little housekeeping on how the session goes so if you have any questions um, uh, please type them into the question box of the zoom control panel i'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end also the session is currently being recorded so if you happen to miss out on any part of our today's session not to worry at all the session recording will be shared with all of you soon now without further delay let me introduce our guest speakers of today's session ms sara khoja and mr yaya zakir said now to tell you more about uh, ms sara khoja uh, ms sara khoja is a partner in clyde and co's ma employment group based in dubai and working across the ma region for over 14 years she advises large regional conglomerates including government owned entities and multinational companies on the full range of people or employment issues in ma both non contentious and contentious across all major sectors especially in the technology entertainment hospitality professional services and energy sectors this work often involves multi jurisdictional projects market entry restructuring employee incentives agile working and employee relations advice with significant experience in the uae she also has a strong focus on the kingdom of saudi arabia and advising on saudization strategies she has been recognized as a leading individual for employment law by chambers and partners and legal 500 for many years so ms sara we are honored to have you in the session a warm welcome to the session once again thank you now moving on to our next speaker uh, mr yaya zakir said so to tell you more about mr yaya zakir said so mr yaya zakir said is a general manager at gulf infotech and has more than a decade of experience in cloud and it based solutions he is a digital transformation leader with expertise in google microsoft saas and other cloud solutions mr yaya has also played an extensive role in planning managing and ensuring business continuity while transitioning legacy systems to the cloud he believes in bridging the gap between customers requirement and the solutions best suited for the needs so mr yaya it's a pleasure to have you in our session and once again welcome thank you same here it's my pleasure as well great so i would now request mr yaya to tell our attendees about great chairs association with gulf infotech so mr yaya over to you thank you rashmi thank you for the introduction so gulf infotech has been associated with uh, great hr for a couple of years now before i talk about the association and how great hr automates your hr requirements let me first quickly brief you about gulf infotech and then a few words about great hr and then we'll discuss about our collaboration the gulf infotech has been a born and cloud solution provider since 2007 and we are partners with over 35 different cloud solutions we believe in helping customers meet their requirements and solve them through software solutions especially the cloud based ones so that you don't have to worry about hosting a local server in your premises or maintaining and managing these things you need to only worry about running your business in the most optimum way and we take care of your software requirements and needs we believe in automating your requirements so that you don't have to uh run around searching for information when it's in need and things of that sort 
we as a company are present in four different locations. We are in Oman, UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar at the moment. And we have over 850 active cloud customers. So these are our existing cloud customers that are available at, that we are servicing. And at the moment we manage over 125,000 uh, users at the uh, organization level, uh, helping our customers and managing them. Now, coming to the great HR piece of the conversation, now, today's session is a very general session about the implications of the UAE labor law. Now, we wanted to keep this session very informative for you so that you can understand the uh, most talked about uh, policies and uh, uh, implications at the moment, and at the same time, understand how you can automate certain aspects of this and bring it under a single umbrella of a software technology like that of Great HR. Now, Great HR and Gulf Infotech have been partners for many years and Great HR as a solution is an HR automation and centralization solution. As a software, Great HR allows you to store employee data, generate the employee payroll, track the employee attendance, uh, HR requirements, and many aspects of that sort. Now, again, in the UAE labor law, we have many aspects of the employee or the HR relationships, uh, keeping the data of the employees handy uh, in a structured way. Uh, the salary should be transferred using the regularized manners. You cannot simply do manual transactions to your employees. The salary has to be paid on time within a, a defined timeline, within a defined uh, framework. All these things require software automation. And that is where Great HR comes into play. Now, again, I've just covered on very a few points where Great HR helps you automate your HR requirements, but Great HR is an extensive software that allows you to help automate and seamlessly manage your HR workforce so that you can continue managing your business and automate the HR side of things. So that's about uh, Gulf Infotech and the Great HR. Uh, let's hand it over back to Rashmi, and then we'll start the Q&A session for the implications of the UA labor law, which you guys have been uh, patiently waiting to get started with. Sure. Thank you so much, Mr. Yaya. So, dear attendees, now let's continue further. And also, I'm sure you are waiting for this part of this session where we actually discuss about the today's topic, that is the implications, the implications on the latest uh, UAE labor laws. So, to help us understand it better, we have our so, Ms. Sara, I would like to request your expertise and help us understand uh, the UAE labor laws in a much better way today. So, uh, with your permission, if I could start off the uh, session with a few more questions that I have on behalf of our attendees. Yes, of course. Yeah, thank you so much. So, uh, Ms. Sara, my first question is a very basic question. That is, what are the recent changes in UAE labor laws and who does the new law apply to? Okay, so the UAE has a new federal labor law uh, and it came into force on the 2nd of February 2022, so this year, and it applies to all employees in the private sector. It doesn't apply to the government public service, it doesn't apply to the armed services uh, or to people working on vessels, uh, it does not apply to agricultural workers, and it doesn't apply to domestic workers. Uh, but it applies to everybody else who works for a private company um, <clears throat> in, across the Federation, so in all seven Emirates, and in all of the free zones except the um, DIFC and the ADGM, which are two financial free zones. Um, in terms of, you know, the main changes or why it is significant, the new law is very, very different from the old law. It has a structure where um, it, uh, it, it sets out the main provisions, but it also has implementing regulations. And the implementing regulations were um, 
were published in the first week uh, of February, just after the new law came into force. Uh, what we expect to see is that the implementing regulations will be reissued uh, from time to time as the ministry wants to update or modernize uh, certain provisions. Um, now, I think there's three key things uh, in the law uh, that I'd like to highlight. The first one is that under the new law, all employees, regardless of their grade, regardless of uh, their seniority or pay, uh, all employees must be engaged on fixed term contracts. And the fixed term contracts uh, can be up to three years. Now, if employees are already in the business and have unlimited term contracts, their contracts have to be converted to fixed term within a year of the new law. So employers have until the 1st of February 2023 to change everybody over onto fixed term contracts. Um, it is a big change, excuse me. Um, it is a big change um, and a big sort of cultural shift for employees and employers. Uh, so that's one of the things that all employers, I think, are, are, are going to have to deal with in, in the coming year. Um, the other change is with regard to leave. So there are now many different types of uh, new leaves that have been introduced uh, into, into the new law. Uh, leave such as study leave, bereavement leave, marriage leave, uh, parental leave. Uh, those are all now in the new law. Uh, and also annual leave. So there is no change in the uh, entitlement to annual leave. Uh, everybody is, is still entitled to a year, uh, sorry, 30 days of annual leave, provided they, they have a, a complete year of service. Um, but the changes are about carry forward uh, and payment of annual leave. So uh, now the implementing regulations say that an employer uh, employee can only carry forward a maximum of half of their leave entitlement. Um, and if they are paid instead of, or if they encash their leave, then during the employment, encashment is at the rate of gross pay. And on termination of employment, encashment is at the rate of basic pay only. Um, and then the um, third thing uh, that I'd really like to highlight, and obviously we, are, we can, go through other questions or anything else that your listeners want to, uh, attendees want to talk about. Um, but the third thing to highlight is end of service gratuity. So end of service gratuity is the same formula. An employee has to have a year of service to be, to be entitled to it. It's 21 days for each year for the first five years, 30 days for each year after five years. Um, and it's capped at two years remuneration. It's calculated only on the basic pay, uh, but the big changes are that an employee is under the new law, always entitled to end of service gratuity. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they resign, doesn't matter whether they are on a fixed term contract and they do not complete the year. And it also does not matter if they are dismissed for gross misconduct. In all circumstances, provided the employee has a year of service, they will always be entitled to end of service gratuity. And that is a very big change uh, under the new law. Yes, Ms. Sarah, definitely it's a big change because I think it is uh, not just one aspect of the employment that is affected because of this new change. There are several factors which have got affected because of this, like you rightly mentioned, could be leaves, could be resignation or the nature of employment. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, the information that you have shared has helped our attendees a lot. Thank you so much for that. And with this note, I'll move on to our next question. Uh, so my next question is, what are the transitory requirements for existing employees? So existing employees, uh, the new law applies to them as well. Uh, the new law very clearly says it, it applies to everybody who's an employee on the 2nd of February. 2022, uh, regardless of when their employment started. So in terms of transitionary provisions, uh, the transitionary provisions are really only relevant if the employee is on an unlimited term contract. 
Um, and the way it works is that, uh, as, I, as uh, I already said, uh, during the first year of the new law, uh, employers have to move everybody over to be on fixed term contracts, so convert people, uh, and they have a year to do that. They, um, if somebody is on an unlimited term contract and they are uh, either they resign or they are dismissed, uh, then there are some specific rules that apply and they only apply during this one year. So if the employee resigns or is dismissed, the employer can calculate end of service gratuity according to the old law only during this one year again. Uh, so it's very limited in time, but you can apply the old law's rules about gratuity. Um, and, and what does that mean? That means that if, for example, they've resigned with less than five years of service, their end of service gratuity will be reduced according to how much uh, employment service they have. So do they have between two and uh, do they have between one and three years service or three and five years service or over five years service? because their gratuity under the old law uh, was reduced if they had less than five years service. Um, if, they, um, have, if the employer is um, dismissing, then potentially the employer could say, well, uh, they shouldn't be entitled to gratuity if they're dismissed for gross misconduct. That was under the old law. Um, and then finally, under the, old, uh, under the new law, uh, for this one year period, if as an employer, you give notice on a unlimited term contract, the notice that you have to give is longer. So, so under the old law, we had a minimum notice of 30 days and 30 days could be the contractual notice, uh, regardless of how, how long somebody had been in the business. Under the new law during this one year period, if uh, an employer is gonna dismiss uh, somebody who's on an unlimited term contract, then they give uh, 30 days notice if the employee has uh, less than five years of service. They have to give uh, 60 days notice if the employee has um, up to uh, 10 years of service, 10 years of service, and they have to give uh, 90 days of notice if the employer has over 10 years of service. So there's longer notice in this one year period if you're gonna dismiss somebody who's on an unlimited term contract. All right, yeah. So Ms. Sara, in such case, are employees still entitled to end of service gratuity? If they are dismissed on an unlimited term contract? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, in either cases. So how does it work when it comes to service gratuity? Yeah, so during if you're on an unlimited term contract and you're being dismissed during this one year period, you will still be entitled to end of service gratuity, but your employer can calculate it under the old law, which means if you have less than five years service, your gratuity will be reduced. Um, that, that's really the main thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, so Ms. Sara, we definitely know that uh, this new change in the UAE labor law is definitely a big one. But uh, what do you think the biggest operational change is in the new law? I would say it's, it's the requirement to have everybody on fixed term contracts, uh, because that is a big, big change. Uh, and this, uh, not just for new employees, but for existing employees as well. So having to convert them. Uh, my understanding as well is that the Ministry uh, of HR in the UAE has, uh, when, when they are dealing with conversions, so somebody who's on an unlimited term, who may still have um, a period of time on their visa, uh, and they convert the contract, they will backdate the contract to, to match the labour card. So... Um, in this way, the labor cards and the contracts are aligned in, in their fixed term. So that's a, just a practical, useful point for employers. Uh, and I think this is the biggest thing uh, that is um, on an operational basis because employers are having to explain to employees that they, they must convert the contracts uh, and there is no choice about it. Uh, so it's a big cultural shift 
and it's also an admin, an administrative process. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that wonderful piece of information, Ms. Sarah. So with this, I'll move on to the last question of mine. So with this new law, are there any new concepts that have been introduced? Um, the, the, an increased amount of leave, so that, that is new. Um, so just study leave being introduced, bereavement leave and, and, and so on. So that, that, is, uh, that is new. And then new concepts, of course, um, a stronger principle of non-discrimination. So Article 4 uh, sets out a, a sort of strong statement that employers should not be discriminating on the basis of uh, race, ethnicity, uh, sex, age, and so on. Um, and, all, and a principle that employers should also prevent harassment in the workplace uh, and employees have the right to raise internal grievances if the law has been breached or if they've been subject to such treatment. Uh, so those, those are two, the way that it's worded and the, the strength of the words is uh, those are two very new concepts. Um, and then on a more general basis, um, there's a lot, a lot greater recognition for uh, different types of work patterns. So part-time work, uh, flexible work, job sharing, remote working, uh, the new law recognizes all of those, um, all of those different ways of working, which again is a very big change, um, because under the old law, the law just assumed everybody worked full time and everybody worked sort of nine to five, five days a week, five or six days a week. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Sarah. I think uh, I'm done with my questions, but now we will move on to the attendees. Uh, so dear attendees, uh, we are now opening up the session for the Q&A round. So if you have any questions, please put them in the question box of the Zoom control panel, and I'll take them up uh, online here and we'll try and get the answer from Ms. Sarah. So please uh, start putting across your questions here. We'll be more than happy to take it up. So, uh, Ms. Sarah, I can already see there are a couple of questions here in the window. So, the first question is from one of our attendees, Mr. Sandeep. So, Sandeep's question is, uh, does the new labor law talk about any timeline to process the final settlement to leavers? Yes. So, the final, in, the final payments uh, have to be made within 14 days uh, of the employment terminating. All right. So, uh, Mr. Sandeep, I hope that answers your question. So I'll move on to the next question. Uh, so our next question is, uh, what are the few things that organizations should keep in mind in order to comply with the new labor laws? Hmm. <laughs> um, well, I think now, so employers need to review their employment contracts to amend them in line with the new law. They'll need to review their policies and handbooks again to make sure that they align. Um, one potential thing is to provide um, training for employees. So maybe training in, in um, at, well, at training in sort of workplace behavior and etiquette to avoid any uh, kind of complaints about discrimination or harassment. That would be something else that employers should think about. All right. So I hope that answers the question. And uh, uh, dear attendees, any more questions, please feel free to put it across here. And I think a couple of questions we have already answered. Uh, also, Ms. Sarah, uh, is there anything that uh, you would like to highlight here uh, from the employer perspective when it comes to the uh, new law under this uh, big change? Um, employer's I, point of view. From an employer perspective, from yeah. an employer perspective, the new law is um, it's very employer friendly, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Uh, 
with fixed term contracts, it is, um, you know, in all honesty, it is easier to exit people from the business. So once they complete the fixed term, the employer can simply say, well, I'm not going to renew your contract. Um, and also even with people who the employer would like to retain, uh, it would be possible for um, the, the employer to say, well, I'm, I'm not going to renew this contract, but uh, I want to offer you a new contract uh, and these are the terms and conditions. So to renegotiate, it's possible for the employer to renegotiate. All right. Also, Ms. Sarah, I think uh, I might be asking for too much, but uh, you can also deny this request. So is there any case study that you would like to uh, share it with us? I know it's too early to encounter any such cases, but have you come across any as such so far? Um, not really. I mean, I can see a lot of questions. So maybe we take some of the questions. Sure, sure, definitely. Yeah. So I can see next question is from uh, one of our attendees, Ms. Shilpa. Uh, hi, Shilpa. So Ms. Sarah, Shilpa's question is, uh, she would like to know if an employee breaks the limited contract, then how the final settlement works? Yes. So even if they break the limited contract, um, there's no penalty on the employee. The only thing they have to do is they have to give notice, uh, which can be a minimum of 30 days or a maximum of 90 days. Uh, and then they are they are entitled to all of their entitlements in the normal way. There's no penalty for breaking the, the contract. Wonderful. Yeah. So I hope, uh, Shilpa, that answers your question. And I think, uh, Ms. Sarah, Shilpa also has a follow-up question on that. So any penalty has to be paid by the employee to the employer in such cases? No, they don't. The, the, the only thing the employee has to give is notice. All right, great, yeah. So I think uh, Shilpa, it is now clear to you. Uh, so thanks for asking the questions. Uh, next, I can see Miss Monica has a question for us. Uh, so Monica's question is, uh, how will WPS compliance be monitored or regulated for the new types of contracts, whether flexible and uh, temporary contracts? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so flexible contracts are under the law where the employer's requirements for the work um, vary. So it might go up or it might go down. Um, and so we will have to see what types of contracts the ministry and the free zones, well, the ministry, because WPS only applies to um, the employers either in the JAFSA free zone or registered with the Ministry of HR. We'll have to see how they, um, how they have the contracts. So do they still expect a minimum monthly payment to be made? Or is it as flexible as the law implies, which means that it could go up one week or down another week? So in any month, you, you might have a big variation and maybe even on some months an employee wouldn't work at all so we the systems are still catching up to the new law um, and we're still waiting for some of these updates to reflect in the system so uh, until they do at the moment unfortunately we, we don't really know we don't know how they would propose to to regulate and monitor WPS for these other types of, of, of working all right so, uh, Monica, in that case, we can just tell you wait and watch. <laughs> All right. So, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, it is from uh, Elena. Uh, hi, Elena. Uh, I have got your question, but it is not that clear. Anyways, I'll take it up. Uh, we'll try to answer it uh, uh, at our best. So, uh, Ms. Sara, Elena's question is, uh, what is minimum to maximum dependent on uh, arbitrary dismissal? Uh, so I think the question there, maybe you're talking about in terms of notice. So notice is a minimum of 30 days or a maximum of 90. And it's up to the employer and employee to agree in the contract. Uh, there's no, the, only, the law only says a minimum and a maximum. It doesn't say it's for, it's for the employer and, and employee to decide. Um, in terms of arbitrary dismissal, the maximum arbitrary dismissal is three months. Uh, and so whether, whether an employee gets one month or two months or the maximum three months, 
it's for the court to decide. And the court will usually look at uh, the length of service that the employee has, um, the circumstances around the dismissal. So you know, why was the employee dismissed? How was he dismissed? How was he treated when he was dismissed? Um, the employee's age can also be a factor and their seniority. So they'll look at an, a number of things. All right, so I hope that answers your question, Alina. Thank you so much, Sarah. So I'll move to the next question. Uh, so Sarah, my next question is, uh, does it have any specific implications on small and medium enterprises? Um, no, it doesn't, because the, um, the law applies to them in the same way. There's no, there are no special rules about small employers. Um, no, not under the labor law. There are some ministerial resolutions according to employer classification and so on, which uh, which may have an impact, but um, the law itself is, is, is the same. All right, thank you so much for the clarification. And I'll move on to the next question. Uh, it is from one of our attendees, Mr. Sukhpal Singh. Uh, hi, Sukhpal. Uh, so Sukhpal just wanted to know if the employer has right to complete the FNF after 14 days. Uh, I mean, the answer is no, because the law says very clearly that the, the final payments have to be made within 14 days. Now, if you are giving something extra, then you could make it after 14 days. But the 14 days covers the notice, the holiday, the gratuity. Anything that's covered by law should be paid within 14 days. Now, the ministry this week published a resolution setting out penalties uh, I have to say, I, I have to admit, I have not checked it yet, but it's possible that there will be a penalty if the employer does not pay within 14 days. All right. Thanks for the answer. And uh, the next question is, Sarah, can employee request for partial or full settlement of gratuity without resigning from the company? For, a, for instance, uh, when a big amount of fund is needed for child marriage. Um, so it's not, uh, it is not an entitlement. The employee can't demand that they get an advance payment, uh, but it's something that they can ask for and an employer could do it, um, but, uh, but they don't have to. So it's, it's possible that they can ask for it. All right, so it's up to the company again. Yeah. Great, all right. Okay, so I'll move on to the next question. Uh, so the next question from one of our attendees is, uh, uh, when do you estimate that they will announce how the new contract types will be implemented with regards to uh, contract expiry for temporary contracts? Example, contract uh, shall expire upon completion of project X. So a receipt of the completion certificate from client uh, at I think at the moment, the TASIL officers still require a firm expiry date on all types of contracts, which does not follow these new contract types. So I don't think that that will change. So even where you have a project, you would still need to give a fixed term contract. So I don't think that's going to change. The, the ministry is always going to expect fixed term, even, even if it's a temporary contract. The temporary contract could be, for example, six months or one year, um, but, I, but I don't think it would be temporary, just open-ended. It has to be fixed term. And the same with the flexible contract, so the flexi flexible work contract. It would have to be for a fixed term period. Sure. Yeah, so I hope that answers the question. And uh, Sarah, we have a uh, next question, which is very common, but it important is what I believe. So the question is, uh, please share information about probation and visa cost recovery if employee leaves. Yeah, um, so the new law says that if either party terminates during probation, they have to give 14 days of notice. Um, if the employee is leaving to another job in the UAE, then they have to give 30 days of notice. Uh, and in any case, if they go to another employer uh, or um, they leave the UAE and then they come back 
within three months uh, and again go to another UAE employer, the new employer should compensate the old employer for the recruitment costs, which would mean you know the visa costs, any flight costs that the um, employ employer spent bringing the person into the UAE. And now that's what the law says. How it will be enforced is not clear because um, as the new employer, as the old employer, you would have to be aware that the person has either come back or gone to a new, a new UAE employer. So there's still a lot to be figured out. We'll have to see how this works in practice. Sure. Yeah, so uh, thanks for the details, uh, Sarah. I'll move on to the next question. And I think uh, in this next question, you have almost covered the answer with our previous question itself. Uh, but if anything is left out, maybe you can cover it here. So the question is, if an employee leaves within the probation period, uh, then the employee needs to give one month notice period, right? Uh, if they are going to a, another employer in the UAE, then yes. Okay, so the continuation of this question again is, and what if he is resigning without giving notice period in probation period, and what shall be the full and final settlement elements here? So if they don't give notice, uh, the employer can claim it as an amount owed to the company. So 14 days of wages would be owed, uh, and that's potentially something the employer can claim. All right. Yeah, so I hope uh, our attendee has got the uh, perfect answer here. So I'll move on to our next question. But before that, uh, dear attendees, if you have any more questions, please put it across here. Uh, otherwise, we'll assume that we are going to wind up the session. But there are a few more questions which I'll take up now before we wind up the session. Meantime, if you come up with any other questions or any other doubts that you would like to be clarified with Miss Sara, please start putting it across right away. So. So, uh, Ms. Sarah, the next question is, uh, is there a way to have monthly deductions against a loan taken by employee? Uh, like uh, WPS and SIF files don't have a provision for this. Um, I mean, the straight, the, the straight answer is no. Uh, there isn't a way to do that. Uh, you can give an, a loan to an employee and then deduct it each month. The labor law says that you can deduct up to 20% of the employee's remuneration uh, to recover a loan um, gradually over, over employment. Uh, now, again, the WPS system has unfortunately not been updated for the new law. So I think at the moment, the WPS only recognizes a deduction of about 10%. Um, but this is something that, should that w should be reflected on the system in in the coming months? I do know that uh, I think over the next few months uh, the system is going to be updated. For example, uh, many of the new visas will start to be available from uh, should start to be available from September. So I think we're going to see a, a big system upgrade over the next three months. So ho hopefully this would be one that's that's reflected. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for the answer. I think our attendee is happy with this. Uh, thank you so much for the thumbs up, the attendee. And uh, one last question I have, uh, Ms. Sara here. Uh, so uh, we have talked everything about the new law here, the new change, the big change that is uh, happening or going to happen. Uh, but just one thing uh, I feel we are left with is the technology perspective of this. So my question for you is, how do you think that technology can help in implementing this new labor law? Hmm. Um, in terms of for employers, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess there's a lot of um, data monitoring uh, in terms of uh, the fixed term contracts and visa renewals and converting people over. That, that would be one way. Um, you know, HR records and, and monitoring and so on. But I think, um, yeah, yeah, that's probably your area. I think you yeah. should step in. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So basically that's where uh, Great HR comes into play because uh, the solution, uh, which is Great HR is built 
for all the details and uh, requirements of an HR automation. Uh, before I go to go into detail, I would like to really thank uh, Sara. Uh, the session was really insightful. I learned a lot myself. Uh, going back to great HR, uh, some of the things that you mentioned, uh, Rashmi, uh, regarding the uh, SIF file creations, WPS and things like that, uh, documentation, uh, the visa renewals, passport copies, uh, employee records, employee attendance, uh, employees have uh, how many days of leave, uh, there is maybe 30 days uh, a month, uh, they are working for the weekends, uh, sometimes they are working overtime, how do you calculate all these things, all of these factors are blended into the solution we are partnered with called Great HR. So this solution can help you automate many things and give you that flexibility so that you don't have to worry about being non-compliant with the labor law because you, you have these basic punch in punch out systems. So an employee comes in, he punches in, uh, he punches out when he goes out, you track uh, his or her working hours uh, and other de basic details based on which you are giving them their remuneration. Sometimes the allowance is tracked accordingly, the uh, extra working hours are tracked because I understand the Sara can uh, clarify here. I understand if an employee is working over time, he or she is uh, liable to be given or eligible to be given this uh, extra payment based on the uh, additional working hours. And if they are not paid about it, or if they are not paid the additional uh, sum of money, it's in violation of the labor law. So all these things can be tracked on the software automatically. Sure. Yeah, that um, answers. Question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Yaya. So I think uh, that pretty much covers everything and you have made it so easy for me now. Uh, thanks once again for that. And uh, dear attendees, uh, I hope we have answered all your questions. But if you still feel uh, you have more questions, uh, please don't uh, hesitate. You can put across here or you can always write back to the email ID that I'm going to show in the next slide. And here it is. Uh, the email ID that you can reach out to us through is yasir.arafat at the rate of greatip.com. All right. So I hope you're also able to see the same on the screen. So please feel free to write back to us on the given mail ID. We will be uh, happy to reply to you over there. So I think uh, on this note, it's now time to wind up this session. Uh, but before that, I would like to thank our guest speakers, Ms. Sara and Mr. Yaya for taking out time out of the busy schedule and making it for this session. And also thanks to our attendees in uh, making this session successful. I hope you found this session helpful and informative. We'll be looking forward to see you in our upcoming sessions. Till then, stay safe. Take care. Have a great time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Take care.